Right, thank you for joining the Average Golfer. In a video that's a little bit different, I am gonna show you what it takes to put together a um, club testing or review video of a product. I'm trying to review this product at the minute, which is a new triple track ERC soft Callaway golf ball. And uh, the dog wants to have an opinion on it as well. So uh, that's proven to be a little bit more difficult than I expected. And uh, But what I'm doing, I'm in the back garden, I'm trying to get some close-up footage of this golf ball and also this putter which is the new Stroke Lab putter from Odyssey and as you can see already it's not quite as easy as you think to do these review videos Are you going to let me carry on or not? I think the answer is not innit? You're going to have to go in because I'm getting nothing done here so far This is Penny by the way Yeah so another important part of any review for me is getting the golf club golf ball and the product out on the course in reality and we'll get to the driving range bit and data bit a bit later on but the second part of once all the photographs are done once all the close-ups are done of the product then it's for me anyway it's out on the course and getting an, a real understanding of how the club performs in real conditions like today when it's blown an absolute gale down here at Conway Golf Club data can say all it wants but the reality is what happens when you get out on the golf course when you stood on a tee um, when you're about to put, when you're using the ball, like I said, in real conditions, what happens then? And that's how, for me, I get a much better idea of being able to relay um, a review back to you uh, as, a, as an audience with a lot more, um, a lot more conviction, um, a lot more understanding of the product. It's not a case of just hitting balls and recording data. And I think there's a huge responsibility on a person who's doing the review to make sure that they go through those efforts and get a better idea of how the product works, like I said, in, in reality. And really speaking, the only issue I also have is with a lot of the products you review, you'll be given the product for a couple of weeks prior to um, a release date. And the only issue with that is you don't perhaps get long enough uh, to get a true understanding of a club and its performance. And uh, that's why often with me, I'll do a video that I call pretty much a, a first look, my first impressions, I get a lot of questions and comments asked, how do I compare it to this? How do I compare it to the other? And for me, you can't really answer that until you've played with the club for quite some time. So today, again, I've got a whole mixed bag of clubs that I'm using uh, to get a better understanding and a better feel for in future videos that we do. So that's the next part of the process in terms of reviewing a club from my perspective out here on the course. So next stop will be into Four Golf Chester, which is where I am right now about to do some club testing, head to head stuff, which you'll probably see in the next day or two. This is where we are. That is uh, the old Epic driver. There's a bit of uh, GC2 setup. Golf balls all at the ready. All the camera kit is out. Clubs are at the ready. Trackman's there as a backup. All bases are covered and the idea in here is that I get my first look at the product. In terms of look in a situation sat behind a golf ball, because um, and this is where, like I said, I've changed the video where I try and give sort of first impressions as soon as I see it, as soon as I see it go out on the range, without necessarily immediate backup and information in terms of dry ball data. And this is where you kind of get an initial feel for the product, I suppose. Good, bad, indifferent, has to be said, like I've said on many videos, it's hard to be critical. You get some smart artists out there who say that you're gonna say a club is good. Well, I challenge any of you to come in here, try some of this product and criticize it. It is all good. The question is what you're really asking, is it better than last year's models? And that's when you start to do things like head-to-head -head videos, which then sort of draw comparisons between one year's product and the next, which is exactly what I'm doing this morning. But once again, so I'll be in here probably in general, I get a slot between nine and 12 on a Monday morning. So I spend three hours in here, basically collecting data, hitting golf balls, collecting data, and it makes up, as you know, if you watch the channel, a part of how I form review and how I form a conclusion. And that's me then finished in here. I've been out on the course, so you know what the next step is. And then finally, it ends up here, back at Tiaplow Towers, as I like to call it, where what basically will happen now is that <clears throat> whilst I like to give, I like to get an immediate response from how I, uh, how I think a club feels and looks um, from down at Four Golf in Chester. Um, also, 
In the last few reviews, I've tried to not be persuaded by dry ball data either. So I've liked to test the club first, get my opinions on it, form an opinion on it, without being perhaps uh, already mentally led by seeing numbers and um, <clears throat> being guided by those numbers. It's hard not to, once you've already recorded that data, to not have a preconception. <coughs> Excuse me. So I've switched it around a little bit in that I've tried to, like I said, uh, evaluate the product first in what I'm seeing out there on the range, what I'm feeling, uh, and then look to get it either backed up or perhaps not from dry ball data. So that's the way I've done it. And then I'll come back here and once I've given an immediate response, I also then like to take a bit of time to evaluate in my head um, the overall performance of a product. So I'll go through numbers, maybe have a little closer look at them in detail. We'll look at the kind of uh, the averages and then come up with a conclusion that I can relay back to you. And that's it, review done. So like I said, it starts from imagery. I'm gonna have to have a little bit of a drink, I'm afraid. I'm a uh, <coughs> frog in the throat. So it starts off with images, photos. It starts off with the bit that I also um, forgot to mention is prior to that, you'll be sent the information pack from the manufacturer, which will give you uh, media copy details of what the manufacturer at least is saying is packed in, in terms of specification, in terms of all the marketing and strap lines that we often hear about and you read those and you try and get an understanding of the product. And that's the bit that um, is quite annoying at times from comments that you read is that that information is then relayed back to you as an audience because there's a duty to do that. There's a duty on behalf of A, that's the what the manufacturer is saying. It doesn't mean to say that anybody buys into it. It doesn't mean to say that it's any more believable than you or I. We, at the end of the day, we review. We then review the product. But at the start of every review, I feel obliged to tell you the information and the technical spec of the product, which has come from the manufacturer. So that's something that, like I said, is read, is understood, is then relayed back to you at the start of every review. And then from then on, pushing all that to one side, we go into getting out there on the course, which you've seen, getting into dry ball data, testing the club, looking at numbers, and then forming my opinion when I review that product. And then that again, that conclusion is relayed to you. And I think that for me, the reason I've done the video is because I want you to get a good understanding, and I know that a lot of you uh, clearly do, um, but some perhaps miss the point. There's a lot of work and effort that goes into these videos. It's not a case of just walking into a driving range, giving a golf club a few whacks and then form an opinion. It's not that way at all. Well, it's certainly not the way I do it anyway. And I don't think anybody else from what I can see out there is also doing it. There's a lot of time, there's a lot of effort, and that's just to actually get the content, the footage filmed on a camera. We haven't even gone into the elements of now, what happens now when you get that footage and you have to start to now uh, put it into a video format that you will end up watching so the editing process which again is hugely time consuming so it's not they're, they're not easy views it's not easy money this is hard work let me tell you it, I'm not moaning for one minute it's I very much enjoy what I do but as I said in a previous clip for me there's a great responsibility in I'm hugely privileged to get access to these golf clubs and do what I'm doing in terms of, and, and I, uh, I love that bit, but I also feel the duty that I relay the information back to you uh, as honestly as possible in an evaluation of a product. And to do that, I go through all these processes, which like I said, is very much time consuming, very much still enjoyable, like I said, not complaining, um, but there is a lot that goes into a, a, a effort that goes into producing a video. And for me being confident to put it out there that I can I can be um, comfortable with the opinion that I formed at the end of it and the conclusion that I give and relay that back to you. So like I said, plenty of hard work, no easy views, no easy videos. It's all about putting time and effort into these things and produce, and it, and it comes all that. Uh, at the moment, I know you're bombarded with product reviews, but unfortunately, again, that's the way it is, I'm afraid. It's kind of like, I, I don't um, control when um, products are released by manufacturers, and 
as has happened in previous years because of I think that we can uh, fairly say the PGA show is uh, a time when products are launched then everybody is clamoring to bring their product out so we've just seen Callaway tailor-made we're about to see ping very very shortly as well and it all comes out at once and uh, like I said it's there's a, a bombardment of videos and there's probably I don't know half a dozen people who put videos out my whole thing has always been like I said um, whilst you see a lot of professionals hit these golf balls my the whole philosophy of me testing golf clubs was as an average golfer as now a nine handicap golfer and trying to form a, a slightly uh, an opinion from my level uh, which might resonate uh, with some of you out there which is similar to your handicap than perhaps a scratch golfer is that's the only difference my channel offers but there are plenty of reviews and good reviews there is some solid information being relayed to you at the moment the channels are really producing some good content uh, relaying the information from the manufacturers producing backup numbers and data taking clubs out on the course it's great to see and uh, i hope to continue that again during this year and i know like i said a lot of you understand and appreciate what goes into making those videos but i thought it'd be nice just to take a camera with me on a couple of these occasions and put a video together like this just something a little bit different anyway as ever thank you for watching um comments down below enjoy 2019 it's going to be another uh, busy year i hope fingers crossed there seems to be plenty of going on at the moment and a lot of work to be done a lot of films to be filmed a lot of content to get out to you and uh, the only way that will continue to happen is uh, with your support so like i said thank you for watching and uh, i'll see you soon